before June 8th. June 8th, next week, yeah. So you're mm -hmm. in the middle of a cut right now. Are you still cutting weight? I'm not cutting weight, so uh, this is good for the uh, hippies partly, yeah. <laughs> so, you're, so you're feeling good right now? Yeah, I just make a little bit diet. Okay. I've already made it, and it's like very light, super light. And the final maybe um, like two days. Okay. It will be a little bit harder and sweating. Okay. So it's, it's nothing comparing. Do you like doing interviews? Like, do you like this press stuff? Seriously, like you can be honest. If you, uh, you know, it all depends the moment and timing. Yeah. Of course, before the fight, like fight week, it's every time more things to do, but it's harder mm -hmm. because you have to think about different things. And you have to double think about to speak good, to look good and train. Yeah. So the most important. But uh, outside, if, if you, uh, like you are not in the training camp or not preparing for the fight, I, yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Talk me through fight week. Can you walk me through like what fight week is like for you? Oh, fight week, it's, um, first of all, it's uh, keeping the same, like, um, shape mm -hmm. that I gained for, like, last two months and keep it the same because, you know, with this um, all kind of different stuff to do, it's easy, very easy to lose everything. So I have to keep everything on point and same time to do all necessary stuff for UFC. Do you watch a lot of film? More, I read in books, and because um, sometimes when you're watching some movies, it uh, gave you like specific energy, and you just take it. And I'm like, um, when I in fight mood, I prefer like very like separate things. What I watch, what I uh, listen, what I read. Would you consider yourself an angry person or are you a very mellow person? Mm, not angry at all, no? but when it's necessary, I can be. <laughs> you can turn it on pretty quickly. Yeah. And is that something that you've learned over time? I mean, you've been training since what, you were five years old? Yes, it's correct. So have you been, is that something that you've, you've learned over time, how to manage that, that anger? Uh, you know, I cannot say that I learned it. It came totally natural because uh, the, uh, when you're growing up, with something, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's already like different level. It's not became a fighter. It's already like um, born a fighter. Right. It's totally different because it's everything, all this knowledge, it's coming totally natural. And uh, I would say that all fighters, like doesn't matter what style, they're a very pacific person in the life. But on the uh, inside of the octagon of the ring, they can turn very, very aggressive guys <laughs> well, <yeah>. or girls. <laughs> well, for sure. I mean, you don't, you don't get this by being passive and no. being, being nice. <laughs> um, you know, speaking of gr growing up, I've tried to pronounce where you are from, and I can't do it. Can you help me? It's Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. Yeah. See, I did have it. Um, Dan, he didn't back me up. No. He said I had it wrong. Um, Kyrgyzstan. And how often do you go back there? Uh, not so often. Um, last time I was um, just a, like a few months ago, and it was a very short trip because um, uh, I received invitation from the government, from the president of Kyrgyzstan, oh. and I brought the belt and to show like to all my people, <laughs> so it was very happy. But before that moment, it was eight years ago. Okay, well, that's gotta be pretty cool to be honored like that. Yes, of course, it's like uh, the huge motivation for any athlete because uh, it's not speaking about like things like um, money or whatever, it's just something different. It's very spiritual. And when you are um, doing something and to receive this uh, recognize to be recognized by the government, by the president, it's uh, like top top of what you can get. So five years old, five years old, you start training. You train there. Yes. With the same coach that you're training with now. Yes, it's correct. And how does that come about? Um, it's all about my family. My mom, she's a martial artist. She's president of Kyrgyzstan Muay Thai Federation, and she's a taekwondist, Sardan Black Belt. And she put me and my older sister, Antonina. Antonina, she's also a UFC fighter. That's she's your training partner, is it? Uh, one of them, one yeah. Of them. And um, she put us to the group of our coach, Pavel, Pavel Fedotov. And since then, we are on our way in martial arts. How was it growing up? Um, was it, you know, was it a strict household? 
Mm, I say it was a lot of discipline in my family. It's like um, I received many questions about if I fight my sister when I was growing uh, uh, like small, we were, we were very small and young. I said, um, you know, never. We never fought because since childhood we was learned that um, respect that you have for older and doesn't matter if it's like older for a few years or few months, you have to uh, know your place. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very nice because um, sometimes all these kind of problems, it's coming from um, not having discipline. Mm -hmm. And everybody was thinking that, okay, now I'm strong, I can be number one. But why you have to, if you are still the same person? Of, of course, you can be stronger physically, but you have still you have to know your place and this is more important because if we can see can see like if in army there is like anyone who's stronger will be like uh, okay i'm the best right now and it would be changed but they have very hard discipline same in martial arts that's why in my um family it was a lot of discipline every time i cannot say it was hard or very strict right. but it was uh, understandable and it was right and that's why I think it gave me, like they say, education through my life. And I'm very happy that I was born and grew up with this kind of thoughts. Well, you had, um, your relatives were in the armed forces, correct? Um, uh, everyone in Soviet Union, everyone served for um, some like years my grandfather like for three years or five mm -hmm. my father for um if i'm not mistaken two or three and even my coach he was served in um u.s army for two years and he was commander of tank so every every man in uh, soviet union served something uh are you close with your parents uh, yes, my mom, she is uh, very close to me, and uh, our father, he, uh, he passed away two years ago. Oh, sorry to hear that. Um, I saw on your Instagram, you just recently purchased uh, a, a new weapon. You're, you're, very, mm -hmm. uh, you're very active in, you go to the gun range a lot, right? Yes, it's true. I very love shooting sport and gun culture. It's um, very nice and in kind of like uh, all same of trainings and same like um, very active and very refreshing something to do things to go and shoot. And I'm very happy that we have our sponsors, uh, Brownells company, and I don't have to buy a gun. I, I just have to ask them. Oh, nice. <laughs> Same with ammunition. That's why I I feel like no restrictions for me in my trainings with um, uh, with shooting sport. Cool. So is that something you do to like um, to blow off steam, like uh, to you know in your free time? Just uh, you know, it's uh, for me. It's a little bit deeper. It's a, li a little bit deeper. Just a hobby because. Um, for me, gun, gun culture, it's a, like a symbol of uh, gentleman lines. And um, it's like, um, I don't know, I just, if you could see the history of human, every time it was some kind of gun, knife from the beginning, then uh, like uh, a lot of person, a lot of, a lot of people start to put their mind and thought about creating a gun, the perfect gun. And we could see how it was developed. And for example, looking back, we can see the old guns. It's like a history, like a, um, uh, like a culture, same history and um, monuments, but we have like, like arts, we have guns, the same things. And for me, it's uh, much more cultural than um, people can think, think that it's just very easy gun. It's like a, a gun. No, it's much deeper because it's uh, teach you, it teach you the same respect, responsibility and um, uh, discipline. What's, um, what's your favorite gun, bazooka? <laughs> My favorite gun, it's a Glock. Glock. It's funny, when I saw your Instagram post, I wanted to show you a new weapon that I got. I wanted to get your take on it. Okay. Don't worry, the safety's <laughs> on. But um, it's actually a replica <laughs> of Han Solo's blaster. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you wanted to take a look. I can. Just be careful. <laughs> <laughs> so 
interesting. Is it your favorite gun? It is. It is. It is. <laughs> is it the only gun you use to yes, shoot? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's the only one I'm, uh, I'm permitted to carry. <laughs> Good one. Good <laughs> one. It's like, uh, oh, oh! No. That's it. That's, yeah. That's, that's what scares uh, cats. No. That's my favorite gun. <laughs> and nice um, color. Yeah, thank you. It, it matches my eyes. Um, no, but I did see that you, um, you know, you do go to the, the shooting range often, and uh, it was, I just didn't know if that's something that you do to, uh, to de-stress or if it's something that you do to, for enjoyment, because it's like if, if you're, you know, constantly training or constantly doing something for um, your profession, do you have any free time? Like, what do you do for, for fun? Uh, you know, it's um, being so alone in martial arts, you have to learn how to you spend your time because you cannot just spend all time in the gym because the world is so interesting. Yeah. You have to go and explore. We travel a lot. We um, move uh, from one place to other say, uh, place every time. Mm -hmm. And I just trying to do things that are uh, very interesting for me, that I have very uh, huge interest, in, in, uh, interest for them in my life. So shooting, cooking, uh, traveling, and uh, all this stuff, reading interesting books. And uh, I think you have to, um, of course, you have to spend a lot of time in, in the gym to be the best fighter, to be the right. better person. But of course, you don't have to forget that you still have to live right. your life. Are you good at compartmentalizing or leaving work, training, um, fight prep, all that stuff? At, at the gym and then living life or does it all kind of filter in? I know for me it's so much different because martial arts for me it's not just work. Martial arts it's not just gym. Martial arts it's my life. Right. That's why I cannot leave it like over there and forget about it because it's every time with me. Everything that I do it's including martial arts. You won a dancing competition in 2012 was it? 13. 2013. Yeah. Um, what? It it was not a, not just competition of dance. It was reality show combating in South America and Peru, and it was kind of um, competition, different uh, type uh, type of competition. Every uh, day we was like competing two hours live, <laughs> and uh, it was like more than just competition sport, but also it was including like uh, actor and um, uh, actors competition, dancing competition, like all together. And this is what our part that me and my partner, we won this competition. Yeah. How long, so do you still dance or how long have you been a dancer? Um, my mom, when I started to practice martial arts, uh, she decided that uh, for not losing the femininity, we will practice dancing. And uh, we started to dance and um, uh, it was like growing up doing things together. Mm -hmm. It was not for me like something different or something like uh, that uh, it's so strange or I started it later. No, it was everything going together. Uh, of course, now I spend less time in right. dancing only when I have like a mood or a feeling that um, I want to do it but um, when for example and uh, I was competing in this competition I practiced uh, like uh, every time yeah wait so did you also had to act in this competition uh, it was uh, part of this competition, but you know, um, I studied uh, my profession, it's film director. I um, finished uh, University of Arts and uh, film director. And of course, first three years we was, um, uh, um, we was studying together with actors and it was part of our education. And then last two years, it was like more spe uh, uh, sp specializing on uh, direction films. Do you ever think about what you want to do after you're done fighting? Do you ever think about that? Like, is, is film directing or acting, or or is that something that you want to consider? Or do you want to stay within ma the martial arts community? Oh, of course, I um, I would love to be involved in movie, in movie, um, and all uh, what's like together come with this because it's my profession. It's what I was uh, studying for six years. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, of course, I'm not considering just 
do it after my fighter career. I would do it like uh, for me, there is no problem to do, do two things. Yeah. I'm not the kind of person who just like have to stop something to lose something for starting something different. Mm -hmm. I can do like many things uh, all in one together. You've only been to UFC like a short time, right? Like, mm. been, like well, I, I don't know how short is that. I my first fight it was 2015. I guess yeah. I guess it's. I guess, I guess it's what four fights. How many fights total? Uh, I total. Uh, whew, I never count them. That's the thing. Yeah, I might be. <laughs> I might be mixed. I might be mixed up. What makes the UFC different than other places uh, that you've competed? Uh, just quality of organization, mm -hmm. quality of fighters, and all things like coming together. Because you see, it's uh, mixed martial arts. Uh, organization number one in the world like the highest level and of course to uh, compete here you have to have a lot of skills and to be the champion you have to be the best so um, you see it's a very good organization very strong very interesting and very fair for their fighters I want to go back to something so when, when you've been with the same coach since you're five years old do you remember like maybe like the, the the most intense or nastiest argument you've ever gotten in? Mm. I never discuss it with my coach. I got it. No, because same things that I said about respect, discipline. Yeah. You are not allowed to <laughs> do you. this stuff on the train. I hear you. What about if you just tell me like a secret? Like like you know, no well, Se these, secret, these people no are here. Like, yeah, it'll just be between us. Now. Um, <laughs> But uh, okay, no, that that makes sense though, because you don't. No, I say uh, I'm saying right uh, right now very sincerely because yeah. I, I'm this kind of person. I uh, not cross over the line yeah. because um, I knew I know that his system in the training works good for me, and I can be the best what I can with him under his leading, and this is enough for me. Yeah. So I totally like, okay, this is your field, and I just go doing what, whatever you say. There was an incident where there was a, your coach got shot, right? And you were there too. Mm -hmm. And that was like a life-threatening situation. Yeah, it was um, 2016, year 2016, uh, yes, right. And it was right uh, one month before the fight with Holly Holm in Chicago. And uh, yeah, it was very scary situation for all of us. But I'm very happy that we um, lived out it and we moved forward. Pavel, he's feeling good right now, good health, and he's together with me, with my sister, with all his students and leading us forward, yeah. How does that affect you though, a month before a fight? It was a totally confusing situation and you know, I couldn't think uh, when it happened, I couldn't think about nothing, just about health of my coach. Uh, he was in um, uh, in the clinic, he, was, uh, he received the operation and um, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I didn't know what to do and one week, um, like it was totally like frustrating for me. Uh, but. Uh, when he started to feel a little bit better and I could visit him, he said, we have to continue. We have to continue our preparation. You have to um, start to think again about the preparation for the fight. And uh, hearing these words from him, it gave me a little bit like relief and motivation to continue my way uh, in the stronger form and just do what I have to do. And um, yeah, we went for the fight, I prepared for the fight, and Pavel was able to uh, be on the fight, and uh, yeah, we won it. What was the last, uh, the last workout, the last training workout you did? Do you remember it? Can you walk me through uh, what you did, like what, what, what was it? The last one? Yeah. Um, it was this Thursday before we um, traveled to New York, and um, it was um, as we had our flight at 12, 
we had to leave like a little bit early. That's why we just like train outdoors, and it was it was easy training, and just like shadow boxing, some pads, hitting pads, uh, hitting bags. So just warm up and feel good. But before, one day before, we did hard sparrings with uh, three different sparring partners. Uh, they are every time was changing. They were fresh. I'm just only one who has to work, and we so did with those training part with those sparring partners as they're rotating in. Are they um, are they just doing random things or are they just doing specific things that your opponent has strength to do? Depends. Okay. Depends. Some of them, they are modulating uh, some situations, but of course uh, you cannot modulate like uh, all situations that um, your opponent do. Yeah. We just can take some specific details and include in their own the, our own style. But for example, as there are three and they all have different style of fighting. That's why it's like good for me because every time, first, they are trying to do their best and they are fresh. And uh, second, uh, it's different style. And I have to adapt very quickly for different style. So uh, it's very, um, you have to work, you have to work hard on it. And more when for the last round you are not feeling, um, you are just like, out of your breeze, you cannot move, but uh, knowing that you have to, it's like pushing you something. I don't know where um, you take the energy, where I take the energy, but I, I take it from somewhere. <laughs> you got, yeah, I guess it's just, uh, you find it and you just keep on moving. I guess also, because if you don't find the energy, someone's going to pop you in the face. And that's it, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so you got three three people, uh, you're sparring, you do hard sparring, and then is that is that the day or do you do more? Uh, not that that's not enough, but I'm just... No, uh, it's not just a sparring. After sparring, we are doing like specific exercising, specific work. So it's like uh, about two hours, no stop training. It's like basically no rest. And it's not just like half speed. It's full speed. It's full tension. And after this kind of training session, you are not able to do anything else during the day. So what, in that two hours, what are you doing? Are you doing um, weight training? Weight, no. no just, weight. just like uh, exercising, sparring, everything that will serve me on my fight. Okay, so it's not like, um, you're not like jazzercising or like doing any like, uh, you know, biceps curls. You're doing actual, um, you're doing things that that are going to help you in the fight. You're doing practical things that you're going to be uh, using in the octagon. Exactly. But you know, it's uh, every time it's different person, right. different uh, system of training. They have all different styles of trainings. My style of trainings, it, it's as you mentioned, like uh, just do specific everything what I will use on the fight. And from this, I can uh, get my strange like doing <laughs> just with exercise and everything I can receive from there. That's why for me it's, um, I am in martial arts so for a so long time, for so long time that I figured out my, uh, the system of training, what is good for me. And this is, is good for me. What, what's one fight where you hit somebody and you were like, okay, it's over? Um, one of the fights, um, it was in Peru. It was for the belt of WKC, uh, World Kickboxing Council, and um, I, I fought against a Mexican girl. She was a uh, champion from her side, and um, I did spinning kick, spinning kick to the liver. And when it came through, I felt that this is it, <laughs> this is it. She never get up, yeah. <laughs> On the opposite side of that, did is there a, do you remember being hit by somebody where it was like one that you always can remember that was a good good hit on you? Sometimes on the training it can happen, yeah. but you know uh, I every time worry about protection mm -hmm. because you cannot fight be, uh, without thinking about protection mm -hmm. because um, when it's uh, like exchanging of uh, of some strikes it's fifty fifty you can win or you can lose and you don't want it on your fight you won't win you want more like not 50 50 you want 80 per 20 you want like 90 per 10 or 
at least 51, 49. <laughs> but you can be successful, but you can go very down with this strategy. That's why um, protection, it's very important. And uh, I try to manage very good the distance, where, when to get in, and when is the time to get out, but to get out smart without getting like any strikes when you are getting out. So this is very important. But on the train, it's cap it can happen any kind of situation. But when it's happened, you are thinking, I am thinking that, okay, this is what I don't want mm -hmm. on the fight. And I have to be careful with this kind of like movements. When, when you win, how long do you take, uh, how long do you celebrate before you start looking forward to the next uh, opponent? And when you lose, how long, if at all, do you get angry before you move forward and think about your next challenge? Right next day. I keep in moving forward right on the next day. I can receive like next name for the opponent next day, uh, just few hours after the fight and I'm okay with that. And um, I never, uh, of course, it doesn't mean that I cannot celebrate. Right. I knew that I will have next date. I put in the secure position. Yes, everything is reserved. And then I start to um, celebrate and uh, relax for a little bit for a few days before I start, I start the new training camp. But um, I'm never, I am never stay in one place for a long time. I mean, I mean, um, mentally. What's a What's a celebration? What do you what do you do to celebrate? I was gonna say you can't do you can't really dance. I mean, because you're probably like all bruised up. I can't really imagine like you know something like that. Even though you love to dance, but what what would what what would a celebration be like? For me, it's um, quiet time, quality time spending with my friends and family. It's going outside, going to the nature, by the lake, by the shore, wherever to cook some like food and just uh, receiving good energy from them just like um you can receive good energy n without like loud words or like being too loud mm -hmm. you have to stay very quiet and just like be very pacific and at the same time you are feeling that you are recharging with a good energy this is way of i would love to celebrate i like to celebrate every time like uh, spending good time to understand what you are doing not to have it like going so fast and quick that you are cannot understand what happened right now <laughs> but enjoy your moment so you you know you mentioned it a couple of times of uh, your into the, the energy part of it like you're very into are you into meditation are you into uh you know it seems like you're into uh just i don't know what the word is i'm looking for but you know but uh, i i would say if you are uh, saying about meditation, what is now very popular about sitting and just like, uh, I, I don't do this kind of stuff. I don't do because my meditation, it's... Uh, Beating people up, no, I'm kidding. Like, oh, okay. even, it is. Even <laughs> being in, in the training, yeah. doing active things, yeah. it's a meditation. It is, it is a real meditation because you have to focus on the things what you are doing. And for example, um, I don't used to speak during the training. I just do my things and I think and to perform it uh, better way as I can. And I never speak during the training. Th that's why I think it's very active type of meditation. Do you have time to date people? Like, do you have do you go on dates, or do you not? Are you not interested in that? Uh, for this part of my life, I'm more focused on my career, on my fighter career, because it's very difficult. Um, uh, when you get someone new in your life, it's different people, different thoughts, different emotions, different, different everything, energy. Di different energy. And you don't want anybody coming in and screwing yeah. up that because they may not get it. I, I was going to this moment of my life for so long that I just want to um, do my things um, in good version of me and when yeah i'm done with this i can sing about like something else but for now i'm very focused on my career how confident are you going into this fight on june 8th i did everything for in my training cap i'm in a good shape i'm feeling strong confident and all my experience it's gonna help me on this fight that's why i just 
want to be myself during the fight and do things what I have to do. Your opponent is Jessica I. Let's say something nice about her and then say something not nice about her. You know, um, for me, uh, I'm not the kind of person that doing speaking something too nice about your sparring, uh, about your opponent or something bad. I can say something if she's like going, she's like crossing the line. I can say it, but it's not my style. I prefer to not to say, but to say with my fist inside of the octagon. Do you feel a lot of pressure to be the face of the flyweight division since it's a newer division in UFC? Do you feel like it's on you to elevate it and bring it forward and keep keep pushing the, the level of competition up? Um, I feel good about this because um, it's very, from one side, it's um, uh, a lot of like, not pressure, responsibility. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, everyone want to have this responsibility. And saying that uh, one can be unhappy with this, it's lie. Mm -hmm. And because everyone wants to became number one. Everyone wants to be the champion. That's why everyone is trying to do their best in the training, on the fight and whatever. That's why uh, everyone looking for this kind of pressure and re um, responsibility. And um, I felt good because um, before I started to fight in UFC, I already were um, 17 times world champion. And I know exactly what kind of pressure to expect. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I know how to manage all of that. Um, for example, um, some people, they can say it's a lot of pressure. It's because they never experienced this kind of pressure. And they don't know what is the number one and what is the secondary things. Uh, I know exactly how to divide mm -hmm. them. That's why I'm not feeling hard to do this stuff. Two times you fought Amanda Nunes and it was decisions that the judges decided against you. Do you think you won at least one of those fights or both of those fights? As the last fight, definitely. It was the lucky takedown that she made in the last round. Not because she made, it's I started. I started this takedown, but she's heavier mm -hmm. and she's like bigger uh, person than me. And she was able to took my back. And this is only one detail that brought her this like um, split decision. Mm -hmm. It was very close fight and uh, looking back, everyone looking uh, to the fight and they're saying, La Valentina, you won that fight. And she know it. She knows that's why she doesn't want and she every time everyone asked her um, about the third fight, she's like, OK, I'm not interested because she knows the truth. <laughs> Anybody that you really want to fight that I'm, I know the next fight is the most important fight. So you're clearly focused on that because that seems to be, you know, you zero in on things. You're super determined. But anybody that's on the roster that you would consider like a dream fight? Uh, for now, I want to fight with anyone who come closer to the position number one. And um, my goal for now to defend my belt for so long time as I can. Mm -hmm. This is my goal. Anybody that you see that would be a great challenge to you, aside from like the, your next opponent, like that's on the roster, or just nobody, like it, all comers are welcome. Uh, you know, um, if you are speaking about flight weight division, yes. female, it's um, it was created uh, how long? Like a year and a half, two years ago, mm -hmm. but. Right now, just now, we received more like movement, more uh, fights going on. And uh, only now we can say about that flyweight is starting to uh, develop. Yeah. And um, already now, it's a lot of, there is a lot of strong and very strong female fighters. And everyone is very skillful. Everyone is very, um, very strong. And this is like, um, um, I could say that in the future, flight weight, it, it's going to be number one female division in all UFC. N right now, people saying about bantam weight, straw weight, it's only because they already have history mm -hmm. it's they already have something to compare they already saw many faces and for the flight weight it's just starting but after one year everybody will change their mind and we, uh, they will say differently 
Is there contention from other divisions, um, other female divisions, because the flyweight division is new and you know it's it's being built up that it's going to take away uh, focus from from them? Um, it's you know why it uh, will happen in and why it's happening. It's because um, many fighters they come down from 135 to 125, and a lot of going like backwards from 115 to 125. So it's like point um, midpoint where very strong girls they are meeting, and also outside of UFC there is many uh, girls like in this weight class they are joining now UFC. That's why it's a very very huge combination of different talents. Uh, you cook a lot, you said. I do. I do. I love to cook. Yeah. What is, so you do you cook like um, all like clean organic foods? Is that something that you're 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 super into eating healthy? Um, I prefer to eat taste food. Taste okay. Very tasty food. What is that? Mean, <laughs> tasty food. Uh, tasty food. It means um, sometimes it can be uh, food from different culture, different countries. Um, for example, I cook a lot Russian food. I cook a lot Kyrgyzstan food. Um, I learn how to cook Peruvian food. So um, sometimes it's uh, it can be like not too healthy. Yeah. Like right now, this like meaning of healthy food, but. Um, Having the uh, healthy ingredients, it make it healthy <laughs> by itself. But, they have, but having the healthy ingredients, but it's got to taste good. It can't just yeah. be bland. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. But that also helps that you cook because you know how to put them all together, so it doesn't have to be some, you know, some lame dish. It can taste. And uh, from other other point, uh, like when you cook your food, you are giving some spirit to this food, and you're same. You put in your energy into your food. Yeah. And where, for example, we are all together with our friends, we are uh, not just like this. We are preparing. They are coming a certain time, and then like everybody eat and go out. No, it's um, like a com. Mm, have together the same time and we are cooking together even uh, if uh, we are in my sister we are doing all stuff they are still there like we are speaking and like sharing our time and it's, it's very nice and I um, like I said I very like to cook different culture foods and it's very nice because uh, you know um, it, when, when we were in Peru we every time when we um, coming together with our friends we was cooked one dish from Kyrgyzstan it's named plov it's rice carrot um, uh, onions and meat plov. so plov it's very tasty but you have to know how to cook it and you know after a certain time every friend they was craving for the plov <laughs> no <laughs> no one asked what we're gonna cook this time everybody okay i will i will bring some lamb others okay i will build i will bring some good quality rice and we will cook plov all together <laughs> You know, I'm a big fan of the of the TV show Cobra Kai, which is a which is a carryover from the uh, Karate Kid. If someone ever in um, competition did the crane the crane kick, would you just laugh in their face? You know, like if they were like, would you just sit it's there? It's bad question. It's bad question. Oh. You know why? You know why? Because. Because Daniel learned that from Mr. Miyagi, and he knows. You know the interesting fact. Before my, um, when I won the fight, yeah. before this fight week, yeah, we have seven days, Toronto, Canada, yeah. all nights, they showing three series of Karate Kid, all <laughs> nights, and you know the interesting fact, all nights I was watching this series, first, second, third, first, oh. second, third, and I was watching it through all the time. <laughs> All right, well then, <laughs> that's now we're matching. <laughs> now we're matching. Now we're matching. <laughs> yeah, Cobra Kai is it. <laughs> well, I can't believe that, that there was an actual serious um, answer to that, uh, that question, because I thought you would kind of just totally be like, yeah, of course I would laugh somebody out of the, out of the building. You know, it's so... Um, 
now it's like, like in modern world, a world of martial arts, everyone knows uh, what is martial arts yeah. and what will work on the real fight, what's not going to work. But still, you have to receive a lot of spirit from this kind of movies because it's all movies. Yeah. It's uh, now, for example, I see a lot of action in modern movies, movies, but not too much soul, not too much idea what people want to share and um, to share with the people, but in old movies, we still see this idea, the good things, the bad things, what you have to do, what you don't have to do. It's more like intellectual, and I very enjoy when I watch like old movies, and I think The Karate Kid is one of the very, uh, very um, significant movies for martial arts. Well, some people tell me I look like the poor man Johnny Lawrence, so. <laughs> well, I have one more question, and I will bring back this. Um, are you, do you know like disarming techniques for like, um, like for, you know, like weaponry? I, I don't do this kind of stuff. Okay. I don't do, uh, this because... Is, this is a blaster, so I'm glad. <laughs> this, this could really interest me. My, my kind of competition when I use like gun, uh, it's more like defensive shooting competition. When you have to uh, not only like shoot on precision, but also be fast and react on everything that you have some problem with your gun, you have to uh, know how to uh, fix it and continue competition. Okay, so whoa, so the competitions you do aren't just um, shooting at a target, they're actually like targets that are popping up. It's uh, popping up targets as well, but oh. also you have to move. You can shoot in different positions, sitting, standing, uh, laying down on the floor, and you have sometimes you have to carry something and drop it out and shoot. So it's uh, a lot of activity going. Oh wow! Okay, that's way more involved than I thought it was. Like uh, for some reason, I thought it was. Um just like uh, more standing there. You like know, this kind of competition, it's um, Federation IPSIC, IDPA, Tree Gun. And uh, in my view, this kind of competition, it's same like martial arts, MMA in yes. martial arts, where, where it's like all meeting everything in one point. The same in the shooting. It's kind of competition like m MMA of shooting. <laughs> so you can be, are you going to be a world champion at that too? I would love, I would love. I competed a lot in IPSIC IDPA in South America. My sis sister, she's Peruvian champion, but I won like uh, tournaments. I, wa I, wa I was like different, I won different places, first places, second places, third places, but uh, I would love. I I would love to. Can you? I can imagine you walking around with like this, the gold belt and like a gold gun, like just like a gold gun everywhere you went. Like <laughs> that'd be awesome. It, it, it's like a movie part, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not the real life part. <laughs> well, Valentina, I'm super glad that you came by today, and I, you know, not that you need it, but uh, good luck on uh, June 8th. It's going to be awesome to watch you um, in competition again, as always. Uh, just really glad that you came by. And thank, thank you, you very thank much you for being so honest. And, thank uh, you. And just tolerating me, um, <laughs> and, you know, some of the goofy questions I asked. But really, just it was enjoyable learning about you today, and I'm really thankful. So, thank you so much. I you. really had good time, and yeah. now like uh, feeling very uh, nice to be today in New York. Great. And I continue. I I'm ready to continue my journey to the fight. Great, <laughs> great. We're gonna be watching.